Today, we're talking about an underrated US city that has experienced quite a resurgence in recent years. The Motor City is perhaps the biggest victim of the Midwest that gets a bad rep. It's had its share of economic struggles, higher than average crime rates, and a decline of the traditional industries that once defined its growth. However, in reality, it's not all that different from most towns east of the Mississippi. So whether you're a tourist checking out the scene or local seeking some fun, let's dive into all the cool stuff that Detroit has to offer. Jacob here, welcome to Destinations Explained, a fun series I do that dives into destinations from around the world. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and comment down below any places I miss. Paleo-Americans are believed to have established settlements in the Detroit area around 11,000 years ago. By the 17th century, Native American tribes, including the Anishinaabe, dwelled in the region, referring to it as this word, signifying where the river bends. In 1701, some French dude named Antoine de la Mothe Cadillac founded a settlement in Fort on a narrow strait between Lake Erie and Lake Huron, naming it Fort Pontchartrain du Detroit. The British seized control of Detroit in 1760, amid resistance from Native Americans led by Chief Pontiac, maintaining authority until 1796, when it was relinquished to the United States after the American Revolution. During the War of 1812, Detroit was scorched by the British. Despite these challenges, the city flourished in the 19th century due to its strategic Great Lakes location. And by the 20th century, Detroit earned the moniker Motor City, serving as the birthplace of the automobile industry. However, things went downhill fast in just a few decades. Like most US cities around the time, it all started with the Great Depression followed by a little racial segregation, a pinch of urban decay, and two tablespoons of social unrest. Just absolute economic decline, reaching a tipping point as recent as 2013, where Detroit filed for bankruptcy, making the largest municipal bankruptcy in US history. Over the past decade, however, the city has experienced a revival, attracting new investments, businesses, and residents, signaling a comeback for the Motor City. Today, Detroit has a population just over 600,000 people, with a total metro population around 4.3 million. Summer temperatures average a high of 83 degrees Fahrenheit to a low average of 64 degrees Fahrenheit, while winter temperatures average a high of 32 degrees Fahrenheit to a low average of 19 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, I sure hope you're not planning a trip in January, cause half the things on this list won't even be accessible or even open. So let's kick things off. Ever heard of Henry Ford? He didn't invent the car, but he did shake up the automobile industry over a century ago by perfecting assembly line manufacturing, making Detroit the go-to spot for all things American automotive. For the first spot on this list, take a peek into the most iconic moments of American manufacturing history at this expansive site, featuring numerous attractions sprawled across 250 acres, the Henry Ford. The Henry Ford is a history attraction complex in the Detroit suburb of Dearborn. It includes the Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation, which showcases technological and industrial achievements, Greenfield Village, a living history museum that recreates an American village from the 19th and early 20th centuries, and the Ford Rogue Factory Tour which provides insights into automotive manufacturing, where you can witness the assembly line and with some planning or luck, catch the workers in action. The collective name, the Henry Ford, encompasses these attractions and serves as a cultural destination that celebrates American history and innovation. It'll cost you around 20 to 30 bucks for each spot. So hit up their website for hours, tickets, and other stuff you might need to know. Next, right in the heart of downtown Detroit, we have a small city park. At just one acre, you'd be amazed at the amount of fun they've managed to pack into this place, making it a favorite hangout for both locals and visitors. Campus Marshes Park. The park boasts a landmark fountain, sculptures, and a green space with stages for live shows during the warmer seasons. There's an ice skating rink open seven days a week, including holidays, operating from November to March. Note that there's a fee and that you can rent skates there. There's also two restaurants on site, one is the Fountain Detroit, a laid back open air spot with a full service restaurant, bar, and fantastic patio featuring an urban beach. 
The other is Park, a fine dining restaurant with a more upscale and chef-driven menu. Across the street, you may notice a colorful, eye-catching attraction by the name of the Monroe Street Midway. Established in 2021, this place is your go-to for seasonal outdoor fun. They've got it all. Mini golf, basketball courts, an arcade, amusement park-like attractions, and more. For the lowdown of what's happening throughout the year, make sure to check out their website and socials. Heading south through downtown to the Detroit River, which separates the US from Canada, you'll find a stunning city riverfront that has been undergoing ambitious improvements for two decades. It's just now reaching completion, offering an incredible experience for visitors. The Detroit Riverwalk. Spanning miles along the Detroit River, connecting downtown to the soon-to-be-mentioned Belle Isle, the Riverwalk invites you to walk, run, bike, and spend quality time with family and friends. You'll find attractions such as parks, pathways, and expansive open green spaces with amazing views of the Ambassador Bridge and the towering skyline. Begin your journey at Hart Plaza, a well-established riverfront destination adorned with fountains and monuments in a captivating setting. From there, you can hop on a MoGo bike share to make your trip down the Riverwalk both easy and enjoyable. With everything now seamlessly connected and ready to be explored, there's no better time to visit than now. If you stroll down the Riverwalk and cross the MacArthur Bridge, you'll hit this fantastic 985-acre island park on the east end. It's packed with cool stuff to do, sightseeing, touristy things, and plenty of fun recreational options. Belle Isle First off, there's a 5.4-mile trail that wraps around the whole island, taking you past a bunch of neat attractions and offering some killer views of the city and the park. There's the James Scott Memorial Fountain, a large, magnificent fountain, and a jewel of Belle Isle. There's also a few beach spots for swimming and hanging out in the sand, like the Belle Isle Beach, with nearby parking, restrooms, and food trucks on site, as well as other cool things like an aquarium, conservatory, and kayak and paddleboard rentals. And hey, you may have heard of their viral slide, best described by this guy. It was terrifying, but it was awesome. There were some groans, there were some, there were some pops and snaps in the body too. There are people being flung into the air. <laughs> Unfortunately, they fixed it, so now you have to enjoy it without getting injured. Feeding Detroit since 1891, this next spot just northeast of downtown is a year-round market open every Saturday, as well as Tuesdays and Sundays during summer months in a historic commercial district of the same name, the Eastern Market. Here in the largest historic public market district in the US, you'll discover hundreds of market vendors showcasing their goods. You'll find all your usual suspects like fruits, veggies, and flowers, to art, coffee, and meat vendors. Plus, the surrounding district is just a stroll away from various restaurants, bars, and enjoyable stores. Some standouts to me are Frank's Deli and Grill, a casual space for breakfast and lunch, Vivo's, a bar and grill with famous Bloody Marys and mussels tossed in different flavors, or the Eastern Market Brewing Co. for some craft beers and spacious seating. Did I miss anything? If you know any other cool tourist things to do in Detroit, make sure to comment them down below. If you're familiar with my channel, you'd know I have some repetitive go-tos in my city guides. Typically, I keep my eyes peeled for top-tier ramen, slightly pricey cocktail joints, and day trips that demand a rental car. And of course, never passing on a converted railroad line walking trail. And guess what? Detroit's got one just south of the Eastern Market, the DeQuinder Cut. Formerly a Grand Trunk Western Railroad line, this two-mile greenway stretches in a straight line with various entry points for walkers, joggers, and bikers. While strolling, you'll encounter urban and commercial zones, local parks, and numerous captivating graffiti artworks along the way. Some interesting stops include William G. Malikin State Park for sightseeing, Anthology Coffee for a refresher, and a freight yard, an outdoor beer and wine garden built from repurposed shipping containers. Don't forget you can find helpful links and other information down in the description below. Outside of Detroit, you may be wondering, what else does Michigan have to offer? Well, if you zoom out and take a good look at the state, you'll clearly see where it gets its nickname, the Great Lakes State. From Lake Huron to Lake Michigan, there's always something worth taking a day trip for. Across this glove-shaped land, let's start with Lake St. Clair Metro Park. Here, you'll discover recreational activities to suit every interest. Whether you're into ice skating, kayaking, biking, or swimming, they've got you covered no matter the season. During the winter, the lake freezes completely, transforming it into a winter wonderland. 
perfect for ice skating, hockey, and fishing. If you're here in the summer, take a plunge into the lake or the Olympic-sized swimming pool, complete with water slides and a huge spray ground for a refreshing experience. There's seriously so much to do, from a mini golf course to a playground, tennis, basketball, volleyball, and so much more. The parks open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day and cost $10 to get in per vehicle. Just less than an hour from Detroit, you can go from a chill summer lake trip to hitting the slopes for some winter fun. While the premier ski resorts are located hours away in the northern region of Michigan, this next spot provides a convenient and cost-effective option for enjoying the slopes. Mount Holly Ski and Snowboard Resort from November to March, you can experience slopes catering to all skill levels. If you've been taking a good look at the map animations in this video, you'd realize that Michigan is relatively flat. Even though Mount Holly leans more towards being a hill rather than a mountain, it's still worth a visit with its impressive 1,350 feet in elevation. With 18 ski trails and 14 ski lifts in operation, you've got plenty of options to mix things up. Like most ski resorts, they'll provide boards, skis, and helmets. But you'll probably have to stop somewhere along the way if you need to rent something like goggles, jackets, or bibs. Next up, on the tip of the Michigan thumb, we have a popular destination for tourists and outdoor enthusiasts, offering beautiful beaches, scenic views, and unique attractions. Situated approximately two and a half hours north of Detroit, this delightful coastal town offers a little something for everyone. Port Austin. The town has shops, restaurants, a farmer's market, and features a break wall extending into Lake Huron, providing scenic views of the lighthouse. There's also Port Crescent State Park, just five minutes west of town, with walking trails, a beach, and campground, popular for its sunsets and stargazing. However, the crown jewel of Port Austin is the famous Turnip Rock, a geological wonder that's basically Michigan's version of the Eiffel Tower. You can only get to the rock with a canoe or kayak, but there's local shops where you can rent them. If you're not a kayaking regular, maybe sit this one out, cause it's a bit of a paddle at about five miles round trip. However, the shallow waters around Turnip Rock let you hop out and enjoy the area. And no, you cannot climb the rock, unless you want to be posted on one of those public shaming accounts on social media. For our final nature and recreational destination, let's venture three hours west of Detroit to Lake Michigan, home to one of the best state parks in the Midwest. There's miles of trails running through forests along the beach, and even sand dunes with some elevating over 200 feet tall. Sagatuck Dunes State Park, the park encompasses two and a half miles of the Lake Michigan's shoreline and boasts a network of 13 miles of trails. There's four trails that lead visitors through the rolling terrain and sandy paths that take them to Lake Michigan. The shortest trail is just under a mile, while the longest southern trail stretches to two miles. Or you can take a detour off the beaten path that winds all over this landscape. However, even though the elevation climb isn't crazy, dealing with the sandy surface can make even a little uphill a bit of a challenge. After that, you can reward yourself with a visit to the town of Sagatuck, a small quaint village with restaurants and shops along the lake. The whole state of Michigan has more than 300,000 acres of sand dunes along its vast coast, so check out the link in the description if you want to see more. You can also enjoy exploring Michigan's other major cities along the way or back, such as Grand Rapids, Ann Arbor, and Lansing, the capital. I mentioned this neighboring city earlier when I talked about the Henry Ford, but there's more to it. It's also the largest Muslim population per capita in the U.S., with about 40% of its residents identifying as a Muslim and is even home to the largest mosque in North America. So what does that have to do with the restaurant part of the video? Well, it means that if you want to try the absolute best Middle Eastern restaurants, bakeries, and markets on this continent, then you need to head to Dearborn, Michigan. Honestly, there's too many to choose from, so I'll just rapid fire through some options. There's Al Amir, a super popular spot dishing out Lebanese and other Middle Eastern delights, featuring fantastic shawarma and their famous stuffed lamb. Al Chabab dishes out Syrian cuisine, featuring standout kebabs, especially their cherry one. Or you could check out Al Naraz for a taste of Yemen. Their seafood and lamb entrees are top notch. And just a tip for any Middle Eastern or Indo-Pakistani spot in general, if they have lamb chops on the menu, grab a plate for the table. Mm. The new Yasmin Bakery is a cool neighborhood grocery spot, 
and they've got a massive dessert case with all kinds of awesome treats to dive into. And lastly, for coffee, try Haraz Coffee Shop an up-and-coming coffee chain named after the ancient villages of the Haraz Mountains, which many considered the birthplace of coffee, so you bet they've got fantastic brews and Middle Eastern specialties. If you're visiting from a place that doesn't have a lot of Lebanese, Mediterranean, or halal options, then you need to make Dearborn a top priority when visiting. Next, there's this cool Vietnamese spot that started off as a weekend pop-up in an old Coney Island joint back in 2016. Fast forward a few years and now it's a full-blown restaurant, dishing out some of the tastiest and most unique grub you'll find in Detroit, Flowers of Vietnam. Chef George Azar, a native with Palestinian roots, blends his fine dining expertise seamlessly with a deep love for Vietnamese cuisine, drawing inspiration from both his heritage and travels. Open exclusively for dinner from Thursday to Sunday, the menu extends beyond just banh mi's and pho. A must-try starter is definitely their Korean fried caramel chicken wings. Crispy, flavorful, and perfectly seasoned. There's also the papaya salad, which is even better with an added protein like grilled pork or Skull Island prawns. As for the main course, consider the shaky beef, crafted from prime ribeye cap. Honestly though, you can't go wrong with anything on this concise menu. They even have killer dessert and craft cocktail options too, so definitely throw this place on your list and maybe snag a reservation to be safe. Just a mile away, we have more Asian-inspired cuisine, particularly Thai and Southeast Asian flavors. Funny enough, this place also started as a pop-up and eventually earned itself its own spot around the same time as the last restaurant, Takoi. Here, they even have a popular papaya starter too, or start with one of their other spicy and tangy salads. But don't miss their fantastic entrees either, especially their noodle dishes. Even though it's tempting to go for those crispy barbecue spare ribs or dive into a Thai-style five-piece fried chicken, be sure to leave some space for your own bowl of curry like their best-selling khao soy, a coconut milk curry noodle dish with stewed chicken leg, lime, mustard greens, shallots, cilantro, and roasted chili paste. And don't forget about their one-of-a-kind cocktail such as the Sexy Bath, featuring Norden Pink Aquavit, Sweet Vermouth, Select Aperitivo, Lychee Black Tea, and Cacao Nip. Now that's reason enough to pay them a visit. There's probably going to be a wait, but you'll be next door and across the street from other cool bars, so you can just go hang out there while you wait for your table. Now, locals watching this video might give an eye roll at this one, but you can't skip this Detroit staple when crafting a city guide for the Motor City. I'm not sure how this business has managed to survive selling concession stand food at concession stand prices, but after a century of slinging wieners, this place just won't quit. Lafayette, Coney Island. Now, this wouldn't be the first time that Greek immigrants left their mark on the local food scene of a major US city. If you've seen my Salt Lake City video, you'd know what I mean, but no need to get into all that. Let's just say that the Kiros family's secret recipe for the Coney Island chili sauce is what sets this place apart, and we'll leave it at that. Look, this is a laid back, inexpensive spot that's been dishing out hot dogs, burgers, and fries for over a century. The classic Coney Island dogs are topped with beef chili, yellow mustard, and chopped white onion. Grab a few of those, some fries, and you're good to go. And don't be afraid to put ketchup on it. It's not like Chicago where it's basically illegal to say the K-word. Nestled in the Corktown neighborhood, we have the ultimate destination for delectable cuisine, biodynamic wines, and specialty coffee, all presented in a charming cafe setting. Open from 9 to 3, 6 days a week, Folk is a must-visit spot for brunch enthusiasts. As a cafe, Folk serves as an ideal setting for a date or a solo coffee outing. Whether you're in a mood for a specialty latte or regular coffee, the atmosphere is inviting. Plus, the incredible food is a highlight. All sourced locally like everything else in a restaurant, you've got to try their crunch wrap with egg frittata, tostada, chipotle aioli, and jack cheese on a spinach wrap with house-made salsa verde. Any of their waffles are amazing too. Whether it's a single, a stack, or a waffle egg sandwich, you won't be disappointed. And their menus are subject to change daily, so keep an eye out on my favorites like their melts and sandwiches. You'll notice that they add a 20% gratuity to everything as well. Now, I'm all for giving the service industry a livable wage, 
but for the love of God, stop with the social responsible BS and just raise the prices of your menu and use that money to pay your workers better. I'm just starting to notice this trend in a lot of cities around the country and it's not a good one. Now, don't get me wrong. I love a good hearty meal, but Chicago style pizza is like ordering an entire bread filled swimming pool. It's really a spectacle for tourists and a questionable life choice for the locals. However, Detroit style pizza doesn't conform to the traditional round shape. It rebels with its rectangular, thick, deep dish glory, but not too deep. And you'll find some of the best at Pie Side Pizza. You may have heard of Detroit style pizza from some bigger chains like Little Caesars or Pizza Hut, but you really need to visit the Midwest to get the good stuff. Yet over the past decade, Detroit style pizza joints have sprung up across the nation, each putting its own spin on the pan pie. The square shaped pizza proves to be incredibly versatile, welcoming an array of toppings. But if you're not ready to join the rectangle cult, they also have normie round pies ready to go. Check out some of their unique pizza toppings, like their brunch pie, the Netflix and Chilaquiles, with salsa verde, mozzarella, fried corn tortilla strips, queso fresco, over easy egg, cilantro, and a lime wedge, or their pickle rick, with red sauce, mozzarella, ground beef, red onion, bacon, cheddar cheese, and sliced pickles. Now, for the original Detroit-style pizza experience, you'll need to head to Buddy's, where you'll find the original location on Conant, north of downtown, where they've been doing it since 1946. For coffee, let's get out of the urban sprawl and check out this fantastic community spot housed in a century-old church. And they've got everything from brews to booze and cafe bites. Honestly, this may be the coolest coffee shop in the whole country, the Congregation. This place is downright stunning. They went all out, restoring the original stained glass double hung windows, the classic maple flooring, and even a 150 year old organ. They've got some killer coffee game too, with specialties like the orange spice espresso tonic or the sarsaparilla shakerado, an Italian style shaken iced coffee. With their doors open till 9 p.m. on most days, it's the perfect spot to snag some cafe grub, along with their house cocktails, mocktails, and boozy coffee drinks, and whatever's hot on the seasonal menu. Next, let's indulge in a Detroit classic for dessert, a gem that originated back in the 70s when two lovebirds struck a sweet deal at the Thanksgiving table. This legendary treat transformed into an iconic Detroit bakery, just a quick 20 minute ride from Detroit, it's well worth the trip to experience the most unforgettable sweet potato desserts you'll ever taste at Sweet Potato Sensations. They've got everything for your sweet tooth cravings, sweet potato pies, cookies, cake, cheesecake, and even ice cream. They offer hearty nine inch servings for their classic sweet potato, coconut, and pecan pies, along with individual sized portions. They also have amazing sweet potato cheesecake, sweet potato cookies, and walnut raisin or walnut chocolate chip, and like I said, sweet potato ice cream. There's even a savory menu with sandwiches, soups, and croquettes, if you're visiting on an empty stomach. And if you don't want to make the trip all the way up there, there's a good chance that you'll find their booth at the aforementioned Eastern Market. Returning to Corktown, it's time to delve into the dynamic nightlife and bar scene of Detroit. First up, we have a chic cocktail bar renowned for its ever-evolving seasonal menu, showcasing a collection of unique and signature house cocktails, the Sugar House. They offer a comprehensive menu known as the 101 Classics, showcasing a wide array of traditional cocktails. Additionally, they regularly update their seasonal menu to keep things fresh. One of their most recent menus presented the Wistful Winners menu, featuring 17 inspired cocktails that celebrate the winter season. Noteworthy among them is the South for the Holidays, a distinctive concoction blending rum, barrel-aged gin, cranberry, blood orange, lime, falernum, cinnamon, allspice, and bitters. Overall, it's a trendy and inviting space with fantastic mixed drinks. Definitely a must visit for anyone into cool and stylish atmospheres. This place is pretty popular, so you'll definitely need to make reservations, especially on a weekend. Moving closer to downtown, we have my favorite brewery in Detroit, offering a familiar Texas vibe with plenty of outdoor seating beneath an open air pavilion, as well as trendy indoor interior offering a lot more than just craft beer. Batch Brewing Company. 
Apart from being a cool brewery and a great hangout, they started the Feel Good Tap organization, where you pick any beer, toss in an extra buck, and help out local nonprofits. Some popular beers here include the Beer Garden Beer, a German Hellas, slightly malty with floral noble hops, or try their French ale, Beer de Noël, which is medium bodied with aromas of caramel. They've also gained fame for their beer slushies. I know it sounds kind of gross, but it's truly amazing and incredibly refreshing, especially during the summer. They constantly rotate flavors, offering unique options like the margarita, blueberry, and more. There's even a full kitchen open from Wednesday to Sunday too. Go for the hand-pulled pretzel, it's a game changer. So you know how many US cities shut down streets every night or on the weekend for a wild night out? Well, Detroit has something of their own that's fun whether it's day or night. But instead of a street, it's an alley, featuring colorful murals, hidden bars, and a vibrant nightlife. Let's talk about the belt. Here, you'll discover two bars operated by the same owners. There's The Skip, a laid-back outdoor bar, and its somewhat more refined counterpart, Standby. The Skip is an open-air cocktail bar with island vibes, serving fun frozen tropical drinks and craft brews. There's creative cocktails, small bites, and one of the best frozen Irish coffees I've ever had. Standby boasts a touch of sophistication, encouraging reservations, and offers equally impressive cocktails along with a more diverse selection of food. Both bars aren't open every day, but when they are, they're open late. So check out their socials for hours and other information. Next, we have an intimate listening lounge and bar, where authentic vinyl records from blues, jazz, R&B, rock, and more set a nostalgic tone. Guests can enjoy drinks in a cozy setting, enhanced by a state-of-the-art sound system for an immersive music experience. Grio Music Lounge. The vibe is chill and laid back, perfect for a cozy chat or just kicking back in a relaxed setting with great music. On Wednesdays, they take a trip down memory lane with some old school tunes, or you can groove to R&B soul on Thursdays and experience the perfect blend of R&B, neo soul, and jazz on Friday and Saturdays. Don't forget to grab their renowned cocktail, The Griot, featuring premium vodka infused with the city's sweetest organic pineapples, complemented by a blend of strawberry and pineapple juice. And you can expect something new anytime you visit with their weekly gourmet specialty drinks. This is definitely the place to go if you've outgrown the nightlife party scene and are seeking a more mature and relaxed atmosphere. Wrapping up this list, let's explore a bar I haven't highlighted on this channel before, an authentic Belgian pub. From feather bowling to an array of Belgian beers and bowls of piping hot mussels, featuring a place like this in one of my guides is long overdue. Caju Cafe. Here, you can enjoy a fun game of feather bowling, which is like rolling cheese-shaped wooden balls towards a feather in the ground. The goal is to get your balls closer than your opponents, similar to curling or bocce ball. And Caju Cafe is one of the only few locations in the world outside of Belgium that hosts any actual league. And they allow public play as well if you want to try for yourself. You can dive into a feast of Belgian treats, from tasty mussels to live music, and sip on a variety of Belgian and global beers from around the world. Don't miss out on their specialty events either, like their all-you-can-eat mussels every Monday and karaoke fun every Wednesday. So yeah, the Motor City is making a comeback. In 2024, Detroit will welcome a host of new hotels, green spaces, and cultural attractions, not to mention the NFL draft, expected to draw hundreds of thousands of visitors. That's a quote from Condé Nast Traveler, who put Detroit in a short list of places to go in North America this year. Cause let's face it, the days of calling Detroit the armpit of America are over. By clicking the join button on my channel page, you can now become a member and gain exclusive access to my Discord server. Not only will you be able to show support and help me create more awesome content, but you'll also have the opportunity to chat with me and other members of the community on Discord. Plus, you'll get to weigh in on what you want to see more of on this channel. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video. And while you're at it, comment down which city we should do next.